Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dum, dum, da, dum, dum. Oh, Gertrude, don't bother to clean up here in Mr. Norton's study this morning. And, oh, Gertrude, just anything for lunch. Do you hear me? Yes, I heard you. You said just anything for luncheon. Did I? I must have been crazy. That would hardly be the thing for Mr. Norton. Ah, uh, let's see. David, what would you like for luncheon? Hmm? What'd you say? I said, what would you like for luncheon? Mm, just anything. Like you said, Mrs. Norton. Kidneys is good. Ugh. I have to get some for myself, and you're welcome to share them, Mr. Norton. I'll throw something in an empty orange for Mrs. Norton if she'd prefer. You're Fine. settled. Kid- kidneys it is. And I'll let you know how settled it is after lunch. And I'm not to clean Mr. Norton's workroom until after he leaves. This room is to be officially known as my workroom. It is. I fixed it up nicely, didn't I? You like it, don't you? Oh, it's so nice to have you doing your work at home. You did, and I do, and you don't say. <laughs> say the things you left out, and I'll catch up with you. You fixed it up nice, yes. and I like it swell. Yes. And what makes you think I can get, get any work done in this house? Would you be happier if I went somewhere else and left you alone? I would be happiest if you stayed right here and stayed still. I won't say another word. Good. Um. Oh, here are your matches. Are you a mind reader? Fundamental, my dear Watson. You had that funny, preoccupied look you have when you start thinking about filling your pipe. The preoccupied look was because I was sure that I left a pipe here on the work table and it doesn't seem to be here. It's on the top shelf of the cupboard. I tidied it up. You tidied it up? Yeah. And if you hadn't been here, I'd have wasted an hour looking for it. But I am here. Oh, so you are. It doesn't distract you if I lean over and watch you work. Oh, no, no. Fine. That doesn't distract me. Having someone breathe down the back of your neck is one of the best aids to concentration. (laughs) David, were you expecting someone this morning? Hmm? No, why? I just wondered. Now, look, darling, you just don't suddenly wonder if I'm expecting somebody this morning. I mean, uh, out of a clear sky. Mm, looks like it was clouding up a bit. Well, why would I be expecting a man out of a clouding sky? Oh, well, maybe you aren't expecting him, but he's there. Who's, who's where? A strange man standing around by the barn, just looking at things. Uh, let me see. Uh, nobody we know. I wonder what he wants. Of course, I could pretend to be a mind reader and answer that. I merely wondered. Well, he might be a tree surgeon out drumming up trade or a lightning rod salesman. Shouldn't we have lightning rods? We should. Well, then don't you think you'd better go out and see him? We have lightning rods. Oh. But I'm not getting too much work done anyway. I'll go out. You don't trust me, strange man? I don't trust you with Greeks bearing gifts. He doesn't look like a Greek. Greeks who bear gifts never do. Hello, Mr. Norton. Oh, good morning. Fine morning. Fine morning. My name is George Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds? Glad to meet you. You weren't busy with something. I didn't interrupt you. Well, I I was busy, but the interruption started before you arrived. Working to home, were you? Yes. Just recent married? No, we've been married almost a year. Uh, Where I stand, looking down the years, almost a year is mighty recent. Going to have a baby right soon? Uh, is there something that I can... Maybe, for? maybe. I just dropped in to look around some. You bought the whole 88 acres from Jared, didn't you? Yes, I... <laughs> Got more in your milk teeth if you drove a trade with Jared. <laughs> Jared sure was tickled. <laughs> Told me about it right afterwards. <laughs> he was, eh? Yep. <laughs> Said if you'd been darn fool enough to be willing to buy the place without the north lot with the grove on it, he wouldn't have sold it to you. Oh, he wouldn't, eh? Nope. Dad said he'd live too long to invite a fool to be his boundary neighbor. No? Uh, look, Mr. Reynolds, there was something you wanted to... I just dropped in to 
Look around. Just to look around. Yep. <laughs> Plan to do some farming? Uh, yep. Cows? Yep. Chickens? Yep. A pig or two? Yep. Not too much, but enough for yourselves with some left over to sell. Yep. Smart. <laughs> yep. Uh, look, Mr. Reynolds, if it wouldn't be rude or seem inquisitive into other people's affairs, might I ask what your business is? Eastbrook, Mr. Norton. That's my business. <laughs> well, I didn't mean where. I meant what is your business. Oh, you forgot your pipe and tobacco, David. I brought them out to you. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. You're Mrs. Norton? Yeah. I'm glad to meet you. Nice to have you in Eastbrook. Thank you. I'm George Reynolds. I just dropped by and your husband's been talking to me. Well, you dropped by, but I wouldn't say that I've been doing the talking. Hey, you're a short-worded man. You might have been born in Eastbrook. There's too many long-winded people in the world. It doesn't look like a Greek. I haven't made up my mind yet. Hey, nice job you did on Jared's old house. Fine old house. Fine job. Yes, sir. You like the house? That's nice. I understand you're an architect, Mr. Norton. David did the house over himself, Mr. Reynolds. Times have changed. Times have changed. When you want to build a house today, you need an architect. Well, maybe it's a good thing. It could be. I think he is selling something. So do I, but I can't figure out what. Now, I suppose you wonder what I'm doing up here. It was a question that had entered my mind, Mr. Reynolds. Well, it all comes to this. I got a piece of building to do, and I need an architect. You need an architect. Yep. Go on, David. Say something. Well, I, uh, I'm pretty busy at the moment. Before Mr. you say no, I want you to hear me out. We're a self-sufficient community. We are. We are? Yep. When we got people right here in the community to do a job, it wouldn't be right to go somewhere else to get an architect. It wouldn't? No, sir. No. Not when we got what you might call a native architect right here in the community. And a good one. Well, thank you for the compliment, but I've gathered that people around here have thought of me as that uh, city fellow. Well, necessity is the mother of invention. And I've been doing a little uh, uh, inventing this morning. Well, anyway, I, I want to thank you. It wasn't much of an invention, either. You got yourself a good home and a good piece of land, and your first crop, uh, excuse me, ma'am, is going to be one of your own young'uns. That's putting your roots down. <laughs> Heck, man, you're a part of this community. It isn't only right that you should have a hand in the putting up of a building that your son someday will look at and say, my people built that. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Reynolds. It's... Go on, David, why don't you do it? Ed rocks the cradle, rules the republic, Mr. Norton. You're not going to say no after what Mrs. Norton just said. Well, I really You just have... take it over and come down to my place in a day or two and we'll look the site over. I'll be getting along. Well, goodbye. Neighbors? Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I think he was nice. What what sort of a building does he want you to do? Mm, probably a chicken coop or a gas station, he didn't say. The lunch is on the table. We're coming. Well, even chicken houses have to be built. And he did call you a native and a neighbor. Probably won't take you much time. It is the neighborly thing to do. Sit right down. I'm bringing it in. I've seen you talking to George Reynolds. Gertrude, who is uh, Mr. Reynolds? Mr. Big. I mean, what does he do? Runs Eastbrook. Well, he ought to do a good job. He seems to know everybody's business. Makes that his business, too. Seems like a nice man. He's most nice about a month before the first Tuesday in November. But even after the vote is in, he's a good man, George is. I gather that George is a holder of political office in the community. He's the first select man of the town. He's been since... Since before the memory of living man, I gather. About. Select man. It's a strange title. What's it mean? Why, it's, uh, it's just about all there is. Sort of a president, mayor, controller of the budget, and chief bottle washer. Oh. Well, tell about it. You're going to... What? Build it. Didn't George ask you? That's what he was here for. Well, this is reticent mind-your-own-business New England for you. Mr. Reynolds knows all my business, and Gertrude knows all of Reynolds' business. Well, you're more of a mixing-up man to talk to than Jared Tucker. You ain't told me whether you're going to build it or not. Well, maybe you can tell me what it is I'm going to build, Gertrude. Mr. Reynolds neglected to come to the point. Any sensible person would have thought you'd known. The whole town's agog with it. They had a meeting last week and talked it over. Yes, but what was Some it Some of that... them had a man up in Hartford they wanted. Warren, he said they ought to think about you. Reynolds said it was good business to have a man who re really lived here build it. 
He'd have more of a conscience. Yes, but it. Gertrude, what? Some said it was a mite of money for a young man to be playing around with. And Jared Tucker said that Alexander Hamilton was no more than Mr. Norton's age when he started the Federal Reserve uh, Gertrude, system. Gertrude, please. What? Do you think you could manage to disclose the secret of what this building is? Why, sakes alive, what else could we be talking about? The new school in the village. I'll get you coffee. They've been talking about it and meeting about it for going on three years. But George Reynolds ain't a quick man to spend a quarter of a million dollars, not him. David, you thought Mr. Reynolds was trying to talk you into building a chicken house or gas station. What's the matter? Wasn't your lunch good? Hmm? Oh, yeah, it was fine, fine. What are you standing there looking out the window for? I was looking out at our land, looking at it with new eyes. You know, the freight terminal that Roger and I will be building in Chicago will represent a, a lot of money. A lot more money than this will. And yet I have a feeling that building the schoolhouse in this community, here in Eastbrook, will be one of the most important jobs in my life. Put your arm around me, David. You know, being natives... Belonging to a community is an important and a very wonderful thing. You talked so much, you clear forgot. You didn't tell me she was going to build the school. Build the school, Gertrude? Yes. Yes, sir, I'm going to build it. He's just made an appointment with our grandson. When our grandson is eight years old. Mm-hmm, dum, 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 dum. Some people maintain that young folks are too demanding today, but I don't share that opinion. Seems to me they don't ask a great deal in the way of entertainment, for example. Just look at a crowd of them gathered around a phonograph. With half a dozen records and with ice-cold Coke for refreshment, they can have a good time for hours. You know that as well as I do if you have any young folks in your household... And Coca-Cola at five cents is certainly a modest request, one that any fond parent can satisfy. I guess that settles it. Mr. and Mrs. Norton, they're Eastbrookers now. Uh, we'll all have to stop thinking of them as New Yorkers, won't we? Certainly will. Think they're pleased? I should say they are, Gertrude. Pleased as punch. Well, Gertrude always says, if you're going to live someplace, you've got to be a native. Mm, you've the right idea there. Those two sure seem happy. I've never seen a young couple who needs other folks less. Each other is all they want. It's good. But it's uh, not always as easy as that, Gertrude. For instance, uh, tomorrow night. What happens? Well, they have unexpected visitors. A gentleman and a lady. Yes, go on. And the lady, a famous actress, takes a very noticeable shine to David. Mm, don't blame her at all. Well, well, Claudia, and how is she going to cope with it? I'll be here tomorrow to find out. Gertrude don't like to miss a story like that. So long, Joe. Uh, goodbye, Gertrude. As I was about to say... Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.